prayer time. So, to ba like at drag with Babu Ko, ma wa. At drag to Ko, at all to Ko. We start at 12 and we will not finish until 4 o'clock. So, you can see that it's intensive. If you cannot cope, don't bother to come. Now, for a few weeks, God has been communicating with us about heroism from biblical perspectives. And God wants us to understand that the way of the world is not his own way. The values of our society is not the values of the Bible. As far as God is concerned, it is not the kind of phone you use, the kind of clothes you wear, the car you use, how expensive your house is, or how large your bank account is that makes you great. Those are things that the world considers greatness. But those are not the things that makes you great as far as God is concerned. In Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible gave us a list of heroes of faith. And by instruction, we have been doing studies on them. Let's go there, Hebrews chapter 11. We started to read it from verse 1. And we have been looking at stories there. We read about Abel, a young man who gave his best, gave everything to God. The best, the best of what he had, he gave it to God. And we saw that by his gifts to God, he he became a hero of faith. Then we read about Enoch. A man who walked with God. Made friends with God. Spent time with God. And somehow, he walked into heaven without dying. And we saw that you can also be a hero by good relationship with God. Today, I want you to look at verse 6 and 7. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 and verse 7. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him by faith Noah being divinely one of things not yet seen moved with godly fear prepared an ark for the saving of his household by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith Today we are looking at another great hero of faith. Noah. Let's go to the... Are we going to read it? No. On your own, you can go to Genesis chapter 6. And you can read the story from verse 8 of Genesis chapter 6. In fact, it's best for you to start from the beginning of Genesis chapter 6. Read chapter 6, read chapter 7, and read chapter 8. You will see the story of Noah there. But there are some 
seven points I want to show you about Noah that I want you to pay attention to number one the Bible said Noah was a righteous man if you look at verse 9 in Genesis chapter 6 let's look at that one Genesis chapter 6 look at verse 9 he said this is the genealogy of Noah Noah was a just man a righteous man perfect in his generations because he walked with God a man who was perfect in his generation a just man that's the account that the Bible gave about him so I've called point number one the righteous man he was not righteous just in the sight of men but before God you know people can be saying you are righteous and God is saying something different but the Bible said he was righteous before God now that is phenomenal in his generation because everyone else was crooked in his generation if you read that Genesis chapter 6 starting from verse verse 3 down you read about the wickedness upon the earth at that time you read about how the heart of man was desperately wicked in fact in verse 7 the bible said yes verse 7 god said he, he repented in his heart that he made man because man was too wicked man was full of sin and they did all kinds of things but noah all alone pursued righteousness he was righteous in his evil generation now that's easier for us in our own generation it's easier for us to be righteous because of the blood of jesus jesus has died in our own generation so by his own death we have procured the righteousness of god through him so it's easier for us to live a righteous life in our own generation in their own generation the blood of jesus had not been shed so that was a unique glory in the life of that man for him to achieve that feat he was different from every other man different from every other person and my message to you first and foremost today is that you must also pursue to be different you need to be different from the world if you are going to walk in righteousness you will learn to be different in this unrighteous world you cannot follow people and live a righteous life if you want to be like people you can be righteous for you to be righteous, you must be different. Are you with me? Okay, lift up your right hand and pray. Give me the courage to be different in my generation. Can you pray that prayer? Lord, give me the courage to be different in my generation. I need courage to be different in my generation. Give me the courage. Give me the courage. Give me the courage. Give me the courage lord i want to be different in my generation i want to be different in my generation give me the courage lord give me the courage lord in the name of jesus in jesus name we pray put your hands down let me go on you know what i discover they that ask it receive it if you don't learn to ask for help 
you will not find help even though God wants to help you he wants you to demand for it and it doesn't cost you anything to demand so make it a habit to request for help from time to time don't be tired you know I remember once I went to the presence of God and I'm like I still came yesterday Lord I'm coming every day and the Lord said yes I'm here every day I'm here every day I said but you did something yesterday for me the Lord said didn't you say I'm um, I can do good to you every day it doesn't make any difference to me God can bless you every day he can bless you every moment if you have the courage to demand they that ask it receive it so the first point about Noah I want you to see is that right he was a righteous man in his generation number two he had access to divine information so you could call him a prophet because he had access to divine information now one thing you need to discover is this spending time with God would give you access to information one prophet said I had a rumor in heaven he had a rumor in heaven if you are conversant with God and you are always going to his presence you will receive information consistently from God Noah became God's voice to his generation because he used to spend time in the presence of God I remember a personal experience I went to the mountain to pray and I had a great worship time when I finished the worship God, God, God asked me what do you want and I told him I don't, I don't want anything I just came to worship you because I had no request actually I just wanted to worship God spend time in his presence and God said let me tell you what will happen in Nigeria say in the next election that is coming what you could just say you he said there are so many powerful people who want to be president of Nigeria he said Babangida wants to be president Buhari wants to be president Atiku wants to be president he said none of them will move near it I said hey lord only I will use a passenger to pick the next president of Nigeria and it will be so small that fellow will be so small compared with those other people but he will become the president and he said when he becomes president he and Oba Sanjo will break ranks they will fight and they will part ways and it will move Nigeria forward a little bit. I'm sure you know who that person was. Who was that? Huh? No, not good luck. It was Yara Dua. It was Yara Dua. And it came to pass. Just exactly as God said it would happen. So I concluded that in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. This man had access to divine information in the presence of God. If you want to be a hero in, in the spiritual things, in the sight of God, you must learn to spend time with God. Just go to pray. God to, just go to, to worship Him. Just stay in His presence. Not when you come to church. I'm not talking about coming to church. I'm talking about you alone with God. You must develop an altar. 
the generation we are entering into now if you are going to sustain your glory you must have a very vibrant altar personal altar whether you are a politician or you are a businessman or whatever you do you must develop a strong altar where you are meeting with God the era we are going to is not an era of prophets prophesying to me hello sir only those who have viable altars will survive the period. All right, so he had access to divine information. Number three, he had faith in God. Now, what God told him had never happened before. Before that time, there had probably never been any rain. But God told him there was going to be a flood. And he believed. Flood, flood, flood. And he believed. It's difficult to believe what you have never experienced. To agree with God that a storm will wipe out the world was so absurd it had never happened before you can't imagine it even today if somebody were to come and begin to announce a flood is coming he's going to uh, submerge the entire world how many of us will believe that but Noah believed God even at that time he took actions in preparation for it and he staked his integrity on the word of God. Of course, when you do that, people will label you as a false prophet. He had faith in God. It takes faith to work with God. And number four, he obeyed God. God spoke to him and he obeyed. Now, one of the greatest biblical values of all generation is obedience. And you can never get along with God without obedience. God told him what was going to happen and he obeyed God. God told him to make an act and he did. In fact, he completely followed divine instructions about the ark because God gave him specifications I was reading that story God told him the size of the ark God told him the kind of uh, uh, wood to use God told him how many doors God told him the number of rooms that there should be there God told him how many layers should be there and the man Follow divine specification exactly. God told him to gather food for animals and for, 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 for himself, and he did. Now, when you obey God, you imply that God's wisdom is better than yours. But when you disobey God, you imply that you are wiser than God hello can you please tell somebody what I just said when you obey God you imply that God is wiser than you but when you disobey God you imply that you are wiser than God Lift up your right hand. Okay, stand up. Don't just lift up. Stand up. Stand up. You are going to pray. 
you know it takes courage to obey god give me courage to be obedient to you lord can you pray that prayer give me courage 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 ikimi fumini ikimi when the lord is speaking to me that i will be able to say i mean to do what god is asking me to do without minding what anybody will say give me the courage courage to be obedient i pray for courage courage give me courage to be obedient hold on hold on a little bit open your eyes let me say this i remember some years back i was about to go on a crusade and i needed we needed about two hundred thousand for that crusade and i was praying here was it here in i think we were in mokola then we were praying i was praying and i said lord supply the money and god said how much do you have i said i have five thousand he said go on we needed two hundred thousand i had five thousand god said go i will go with you and i'm like ah uh -uh. where do i go with five thousand five thousand will just pay my transport he said go So I took the 5,000 and I took commercial vehicle to worry and I went for the crusade. But I came back with change after finishing the crusade. I had money that I brought back home from that crusade. I didn't steal all. I didn't steal all. I just went. When as I was arriving, worried like this, the Lord said, "Go and see so so and so person." I said, "I don't know his house." He said, "Pick this diary, check this, 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 this," and he gave me the description of the house. I got there. They announced to the man that I was here. He screamed inside the bedroom. He said he was planning to come to a pardon to come and see me. He came out, jumped on me, and we started hugging. And then he said, wait, wait, I'm coming. Before you say anything, I must deliver the message. I was coming to Ibadan to come and give you this before. And he ran into the room and brought the money and gave it to me. I said, what is this one? He said, I packed this money ready to come and give it to you in Ibadan. Because I was thinking I'm coming to Ibadan this weekend. Since you have come, take the money. <laughs> I said, yes, thank you. Give me the money. I just took off on my crusade and came back to greet him again before I came back home. The money was exactly what I needed for the crusade. You are still going to pray once more. Any kongu and ben yeti mo mba so, ti mo story e so ito, ti mo so yen. Ono ni ko lo bere yi se to to kon. So mo pe mi o kin se, mi o kin se pastor, wo li ni mi. So mo soro wo li ni o, ma ro pe mo kon soro. Any kongu and ben yen, ono ti ni ko bere yi kato to kon. He said to Tony, Oh, low to my people. Tori any Moses sort of Timus on your own. Or long on the king pe on to one long way, love it better. On one long one, the fear is see. On one feeble cosy, a year the Dalanin is saying. What about me, Badra? On one, an eke me, Timafi, on Kilonja courage, eke me, Loruque. Pick on to walk in your cocky, Latin leg, be, be, sir. Nick Batty, or long one sorrow. Who are fit for me? Give me courage. Can you pray that prayer? Give me courage to take decisions based on divine instruction. Igoya, courage to obey God. I receive it today. I receive courage. I receive courage to obey. God spoke to Noah and he obeyed God. I receive boldness today. I receive courage today. To obey the voice of God. I can never be wiser than God. Why would I disobey his instructions? 
In Jesus' name we pray. All right, sit down. Let me continue my message. Let me go to point number five. Now, when Noah got those specifications, number five, he was showing us something about God. He taught us a lesson about God. He was the first person that taught us that lesson about God. And what is this lesson? We saw through him that God is very specific about details. He's the God of details. He's the God of details. I sat down and I tried to meditate. Why was God telling him the type of wood to use? Why didn't God allow him to pick whatever type of wood he likes? God could have just said, make an ark. But God told him the kind of wood to use. God told him the size of the ark that should be made. Why not allow him to use his own discretion? God told him how many rooms will be in the ark. How many doors will be there? God told him all of that. He told him how, how to construct the doors. And when we moved on in, this, in the word of God, we began to see God relating with Moses. And when it was time to build the tabernacle, we saw how God was so detailed in every aspect of that construction also. And we discover that God, our God, has penchant for details. We saw that details matters to God. And when you now begin to study more in the word of God, you see people as they walk with God, you discover that you don't have the right to alter the plan of God because every little thing is very important. When you see, uh, let me, what's his name now? Elijah upon Mount Camel. When there was a contest between Elijah and the prophets of Baal, you will remember that Elijah did not just offer his sacrifice anyhow. He waited until the hour of prayer. There is an hour in the Old Testament. There are hours that you seek the presence of God. It's not just any time. There are animals you use. Not just any animal. Because our God is a God of specificities. God is detailed. Details matters to God. And the moment you miss one detail, you miss God out. We as human beings, many times we assume too much. We assume that yeah, you know, it's that too. Look at, for instance, talk about sin now. Sin is a complete package. Some of us, you take the ones you like out of them and keep the ones you don't like. You know, how do I put it? You pick some. You say, okay, this, this one now is a bad sin. And this one is a normal one. Everybody does it. So you keep that one and you leave some. And to you, you think you have obeyed God. But as you walk close to him, you will discover that God is too detailed to allow one sin and let you go with the another one. I don't know if you are getting what I'm talking about. Our God is detailed. Details are important to him. So, you need to watch your life. There are some of you young, 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 young guys here. Young ladies, young guys. You are so good when it comes to worship. You are so good when it comes to praying. Huh? You want to pray in tongues every time. You are very good in those ones. But when it comes to taking care of the house, you say, no, I'm too spiritual for that. 
when mommy says come and fetch water ole kun ni beyen ole ja ni beyen you cannot do that one but you claim to be spiritual you don't know the god that you claim to know he's too detailed to overlook that your carelessness in the kitchen some of you are so good in spoken english you are so good in your academics but any man who marries you is in trouble because your anger is so bad and you claim to be a child of god you don't know the god we are talking about he's too detailed to overlook all of that some of us are so wonderful in our business you are a business person I, I, we just finished a women conference so let me still speak to women you are a very good business woman and you are doing very well there <laughs> but in your home your children are almost cursing you because they are hungry every time you don't have any 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 plan for them God is too detailed to overlook that carelessness. You must be complete also in the sight of God. Anyhow, let me go back to what I was trying to share. He taught us about the, the, the specificity of God. That God is a detailed God. If every aspect of your life is important to him that's that's just it your finances is important your character is important your spiritual life is important you can be talking to angels you are talking to angels every time but you are a fighter what kind of angel are you talking to demons you can't be speaking thousands of tongues you are the one you can speak every tongue in the world but bitterness sorrow of last year is still in your heart no you have to let go of all of that because your god is a detailed god details matter to him number six noah was bold god told him to gather every kind of animals into the ark and he did that is bold. How did he get the lion? If a small lion of one month old mistakenly enter into this community, not even this church, a lion, if they, say, if they tell you that they have seen a child of lion what do they call it? lion child a cub if they see they tell you they spotted one cub of lion at the junction there many of you will not tell me bye bye before you disappear <laughs> you won't even you won't even tell anybody bye bye you just silently go and hide yourself somewhere <laughs> did he get the lion to enter the, the, the thing? The tiger? All those dangerous animals? The, 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 the bear? How did he get them into the ark? Well, maybe they came on their own. Maybe God just moved those animals to God. God attracted them to the ark. Yeah? But who opened the doors? God attracted them. Yes, they came. Was it the animals that were opening the door by themselves? There must have been a Noah that was opening the door for them. That was boldness. Even to stay in the ark with all those animals. Ah, ah. Snakes. Tiger. Lion crocodile all those ones that you know <laughs> how
How did he do it? I think it was grace. I think God gave him a dimension of grace. Hmm. But let me say what I was going to say. I think God will normally test his heroes. He will put them through boldness tests. I went, I flipped through scriptures and I saw a number of them. God will normally take you through some boldness tests. Did you notice that the first miracle that uh, Samson did was that he slew a lion? Did you notice that? The Bible said he was going on the way and a lion, it was not he that went to look for the lion. The lion roared at him. Did you read that in Judges? And Samson was annoyed and a holy fear rose inside him. That is, the spirit of God moved him. Oh, yeah, Lord, And he went and grabbed the lion and tore the lion. That's when he discovered his strength. Hello? It was in killing the lion that, this, that Samson discovered his strength. In essence, God used the lion to show Samson the capacity he carried. God's heroes are always tested in boldness. Samson slew the lion without weapons. Because he was bold enough to confront it. When God said, oh yeah, go. You can carry so much power and you won't be able to use it. Many people carry gun and still the lion will come and kill them. Because the moment to battle the Atima to Sarah, eh? Eh? You will at my neighbor, no? Eh? You buy it. So, let's say, bye. If you do battle in Kebon, don't Kebon, you need to call Lara. Moses, I read about Moses. God told him when his rod turned into a snake. I mean, all along, all along, come and show this, this miracle to Lagbara come back. Killing a borrow saw by the ego. Why? Why must his rod, I mean his rod become a snake? Why didn't why didn't his rod speak? The rod could have spoken. And then you just carry a rod. You say, okay, my rod is going to speak. Oh, and when people hear that, will that not be a miracle also? But he turned to a snake, and then God told Moses, Go and pick, pick it up. <laughs> Hey, I don't know about you, but I was just picturing myself in that situation. God said, Oh, yeah, he joto, he joto, he kino shema kwe joni, kini eti bres ni, eh? Along one, oh, yeah, long muniru, oh, niko mulorio, oh, niko lo lunigio, lo fire. And the Bible said, So Moses picked it by the day. You didn't know what happened there because they didn't. <laughs> They didn't tell you all the things that happened there. But I, I like reading the Bible like I'm the one. So if I were the one and God said, that snake will go and pick it by the tail. I will speak in tongues a little bit. Old. I will go through a lot of process before that will happen. I think God was teaching Moses boldness you need to be bold to take his snake by the tail now if if you are experienced about snakes you will know that if you are so good in catch, capturing snakes you hold it by the head not by the tail because if you hold the tail it will bite you assuming I pick it by the tail and nothing good happens spiritually what will happen to me? It will bite me now. David also had to kill a lion. And he gave us an account how he killed the lion. He said, I grabbed him by the beard. Can you 
I just imagine what that could have looked like. Because the ship, he captured a ship and carried it away. And David pursued after. Went after the lion. And then he got there. You know, when I was doing my own analysis, I told myself that's one of the craziest things anybody can do. A ship that has been captured by a lion is already useless. So, kilo afe balo wefu. Feel efu ko ma jen, ko ma bati elo ko salo. But God wanted to teach David how to kill Goliath. So, he, he went after the lion. And the lion wanted to fight. And David grabbed it by the beard. <laughs> <laughs> how many of us have seen a lion closely before okay oh oh neri shad bra to vekin bani oh neri abi abi kin so pe wa ri e wo lo ma sha mi sinu mejeji eh ah neri ni te wa fe pa nko tolon ba fe ke pa nko <laughs> and then as I was doing my own study on that I, I got to a place where they said Daniel they were angry with Daniel in Babylon and uh, the king didn't want Daniel to die and the judgment was that they would throw him into the den of lions and I expected that if God wanted to help Daniel God should have showed up before they threw him into the den of lions. He had the capacity to show up at that time. But he didn't show up. In fact, by the time they were throwing Daniel into the den of lions, the king himself was afraid for him. He said, well, I tried my best, but your God did not help you. So, I hope your God will now help you from the lions, so me i'm going to my bed but i hope i will hear your voice tomorrow morning when i come back let your god help you and it was until that time that god now sent an angel god could have sent angel god could have sent angel to kill those people overnight before they brought up the case of daniel look i'm trying to show you something I need you to know a little more about your God. He had taken me through a few experiences where I asked questions. Why did I go through that experience? And God said, I just want you to learn something from it. I remember the day he brought a big snake and said I should go and kill it. And I'm, and I'm praying. The snake was there and I said, go away. And I was telling God, tell him to go away. Abby. That's forest. Let him go inside the forest. The, the more I said go away, the more the thing was coming to me. I, I said, Lord, send it away. And it will not go. I said, okay. I took my umbrella. I said, so, so, go. And the thing, it was like Big Papa John Sherry, and the thing was coming closer to me. I said, Ah, we'll <laughs> And God said, The only solution is go and kill it. So I said, Okay. <laughs> I went like this, went back like this, went around, went from different angles. And I, I was expecting the thing would go. It didn't go. It just stood there. So I took my umbrella. I moved closer. It didn't jump at me. He didn't misbehave. I moved closer a little bit. He didn't misbehave. I took my umbrella and did like this without touching it. The thing did not even move. <laughs> so I moved closer more. Touch it. He didn't even move. When I touch it the next time, he didn't move. 
You know, it's very big. Umbrella is too small for the thing. So I hit it very well with umbrella. Bam! The umbrella broke, scattered completely. I said, hey, now we are in trouble. God said, go and look for a proper thing that will kill this thing and kill it. So I went and took a big stick. The thing waited for me to come. So I went to meet it. I hit it. Now he now knows something is hitting it. And since he didn't run and he's not fighting, God, you know, God, that a dirty motive. I no not want to hear me. That's why I'm bold. Are you coming Go to the bow, Lord, only. Oh, God, oh, man, they get your Lord, okay. At all, Lord, okay. Or Lord, we battle, Lord, or Lord, we battle. So, go to the poor Lord, my beer, Lossy, I want to go. I cock up beer, Codanino, and we really, or is she? Two half in more, more Lord, okay, get your Lord, okay. Or Lord, or Coro, or Lord, or Lord, or Lord, we male. Tanya, like Bara, Nipo, like Bara, let's go. Or Lord, only Baba, Boba, Bara. Every strength came out from God. Everything in existence came out from God. He needs you to know his capacity before you can walk with him. He's not just God on the mountain. He's also God in the valley. That's his way. He will show you that. That's the essence of boldness. Noah was bold. A lot of basoro. When they come in on Yamawa, more than they know I didn't form Yara. He was Kilo Kurukote, Lion, a year ago, Jokosbe. He was Kilo Kote, Tiger, a year ago, Jokosbe. To Bam Miffin, a God of Jadim, Miss Muffin, Signor. They call it Grace. Number seven. He was a great influence upon his family. Noah was a great influence upon his family. His wife followed him into the ark. His three sons followed him into the ark. His daughters-in-law followed him into the ark. Everybody. That's his entire family. Now, if you compare that story with that of Lot in Sodom, you will understand what I'm saying more. Lot's wife followed him until she remembered something in Sodom and turned back and looked back. And the Bible said he became a pillar of salt. None of his sons in law, even akin to him at all, they didn't follow him. None of his servants. He had plenty of servants when he left Abraham. None of his servants followed him. He was only two daughters. Two daughters. That followed him. Only two daughters followed him. And these two daughters, they imported Sodom and Gomorrah with them. And they brought shameful experience into the life of their father they gave him shameful children Noah influenced his family he was a good influence to them it will be shameful for me now if I cannot influence my family Let's leave that one. Let me go to number eight, which is an offshoot from number seven. Noah got a covenant from God for the human race. In chapter eight, when he offered a great sacrifice to God, God promised never to submit the world with water again. 
which means in essence that Noah made a great impact upon the entire human existence through that covenant some of us are suffering today suffering from occultic things done by our generations our forefathers people who walk in darkness I remember sometimes ago I was having difficulties in my life and I went to pray and asked God what's going on in my life and God said it's not about you somebody in your family had done some things in the past go and ask about your great grandfather so I went and inquired and I discovered there was one man called Abere Uje in our family and he had done so many terrible things operating by occultic powers thank God I got deliverance as a child of God you can be delivered now it's wrong to blame such people because at least they imparted their generation and they left something for their children based on their own understanding so I told myself my generation my my my, uh, my children's children to the 10th generation must be blessed because of me I must leave something for them that's what David said he said once I was young but now I'm old I've never seen the righteous forsaken no seed beg bread that is there is something you can do that will flow upon your generation that will make your generation to remember you forever so when I gave my life to Jesus Christ the first thing I did was every of my siblings must be saved they must be saved so every day pray prayer I will lock myself in the room Uluwa, Uluwa, and I will begin to call their names before God one by one they must be saved this one must be saved that one must be saved I listed their names before God every day and I began to walk towards it I began to invite them for fellowship I began to send people to preach to them some of them I preached to them myself and one after the other bam, 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 bam all of them are now saved and then I, I got married I said, hey, now I'm going to have children. How many are they going to be? We agreed there will be three. By that time, nobody existed. Just my wife. She wasn't even my wife then. But my friend, we were planning marriage. So we agreed there will be three. So I gave name to the three of them. The names they will bear. She made me know So I gave the name. And I began to pray. They must be saved. I'm not going to raise children that will go to hell. Ah, Why don't you let me So before they were born, I began to pray for their salvation. When they came, each one of them, as I carry them the first time like this, I speak salvation into their life. I spoke salvation to their lives. As they were growing up, every morning they wake up to greet me. I bless them. I speak salvation into their life. And then I kept on carrying them to the house of God. And I'm preaching. And we are preaching. And they are hearing. And they are hearing. All of them got born again before they became adults. But I am not satisfied with that. None of them will go to hell. It's a prayer I'm still praying up to today. only three of them that's why they are just three i don't have one million children 
Some of us, you have children, you don't even know where they are. You don't even know who they are. Eh? Some people, it is when you are about to die that they will bring one and you say, eh, eh, Am I your father? Okay, your head is looking like my head. Eh? What kind of irresponsible parenting would that be? I have only three anywhere in the world. Whether in the world or in heaven, there are just three of them. I can say it boldly. I went to do crusade in one place in Gereng, in uh, Adamawa, and they brought one child. They said, this is my child. I said, roll up. What do you mean? They said, when you came, the other year, about five years ago, the woman could not get pregnant. It was you that prayed, and she got pregnant. I said, hey, my solo. <laughs> it was you that prayed, and she got pregnant. And so they went and called her his name, my name. Hey. You call, not she's the one that is my child. Oh. <laughs> I bought a store, can you, can you, dada? I have children like that all over, but my real children, there are three of them. <laughs> now, let me go a little further to what I'm talking about. One day I got into the presence of God and I began to talk to God. Abraham pronounced blessing upon his generation. God said, yes, that's true. David procured the throne for his children forever. God said, yes, that's true. So I told God, I said, I also want to procure the altar for my children. And the Lord said, what do I mean by that? I said that there will never be a time in existence that my blood will not be on the altar of God. God said, yes, I grant that desire. You will always have your blood on the altar. So forever, I will have a child that is preaching the word of God. That is the great honor that I desire. The greatest thing anybody can do for God is to serve on the altar of God. What are you going to bequeath to your generation in between Lord and Yeah, your children, your children's children? What are you going to bequeath to them? The Bible said, How did he even say it? A father, a, a good father leaves inheritance for his children's children. What inheritance are you giving to your generation? Or maybe I should just say, what impact are you making on the world today? It matters to God that you are a great influencer in your generation. You must be able to influence your generation. At least bring people to the, ch to the church of God. Where they can be taught about God. Bring your children to the presence of God. Where they can learn about God. It's so important. There's one song I'm trying to remember. My generation shall praise your name. 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 What was the beginning of that song? Oh, my God. Oh, my Generation shall praise your name. Our generation shall praise your name. Our generation shall praise your name. My generation 
just close it there what will you bequeath to your generation assuming that in 10 years time 100 years time somebody wants to remember you what would they remember about you what In this month of August, we have done outreaches in 15 villages. 15 or 14? 15 villages. Just in the month of August alone, we have been in all these villages. less of people gave their life to Jesus Christ. And I just ask myself, what, what am I bequeathing to my generation? I'm asking you also, what will you leave for your generation? If I talk to Thousands of people in Togo, in Ghana, in America, in Canada, in all these places where I have done meetings, preached and done meetings everywhere in the world. And there are people giving their lives to Jesus Christ over there. And my own children now goes to hell. Or my children's children now became another Hitler in the world. No. I told God, no. No, 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 no. It must not happen. Let's say to that matter. Each one of my children must serve you. Thank God they are serving. They are all serving. I need you to begin to pray for your children. I want more me. I I tell you something, honey. There is nothing greater that your life can ever pro procure other than serving God. Serving God does not mean you are going to be a preacher. It doesn't mean you are going to be a pastor. You can be a multi-billionaire and you are still serving God. You can be a governor and you are still serving God. David, David was not a pastor. Job was not a pastor. He was a businessman. And they were righteous people. They served God in their generation. So you too can serve God, my dear. However, if you are here today and you have not given your heart to Jesus Christ, you can't even become a hero of faith. Because the first stage is to know the Lord. You need to give your heart to Jesus Christ and allow him to become Lord in your life. So I, I, I'd like to pray for you if you want to do that today. If there's anybody here this morning who wants to give his heart to Jesus Christ? I'd like to pray for you. Maybe the first prayer you should pray is, Lord, make me a hero of faith also. Let me become a hero of faith. Can you bow your heads and pray? Ask for grace. I want to become a hero of faith. We have been reading about them. We read about Abel. He was a young man. We read about Enoch. He walked with God for 300 years. Today we have just read about Noah also. Another man who walked with God. Righteous man. Give me grace. I want to become a hero of faith also. As for grace.
Noah literally brought the power of God, the presence of God upon his generation. And God said, for your sake, I will not destroy the world with water again. I want God to be able to say, because of you, this will not happen in your family again. Because of you, this will not happen again in your, in your town. Because of you, this will not happen in Nigeria again. Can you get to that kind of relationship with God? Ask for grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Now keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed. If you are here this morning and you want to give your heart to Jesus Christ, either for the very first time or you did it before and you, you went back, but you want to give your heart completely today, I'd like to pray for you. Just lift up your right hand above your head. You want to be born again today? And you are serious about it? Lift up your right hand above your head. God bless that hand. I can see one hand at the back there. If you are lifting up your hands, please come and meet me. Let me quickly pray for you. Whether you are a small child or you are an adult, just come. Is there anybody? taking that decision today don't force don't force anybody but if you are taking that decision today for the very first time I'd like to pray for you come and meet me okay Almighty God, Almighty God, from my generation shall praise your name, my generation shall praise last prayer you are going to pray everybody I'd like you to rise up on your feet and you are going to covenant your generation with God you are going to make a covenant for your generation that starting from me in our family we will serve the Lord can you pray that prayer for your family can you pray that prayer for your family Pray for your children. Pray for your family. That starting from me, idol worship comes to an end. Careless living comes to an end. Starting from me, we will serve the Lord in my generation, in my family. Open your mouth and speak. Make that declaration. Make that commitment. My family will serve the Lord. My generation will worship the Lord. My family will serve the Lord.
Jesus, my Lord, Ben, you are the Lord. 